Disclaimer. Dear sir or madam, we are aware that the writers of this show have abandoned traditional vampire law and have displayed ignorance to the traditional ways and laws that apply to the last mentioned creatures. In this production, you will see vampires walking around in perfect daylight and thinking nothing of it. This is just one example of the neglect for fictional propriety displayed by the writers of Teeth. In attempts to reconnect the missing pieces, the writers of this show have filled the gaps with their own fabricated laws and rules towards vampires and their habits. On this matter, the writers have received much flack for being laughians and iconoclasts. Critics ask, what's the tradition? To submit nothing to you three, the writers of this show feel that all laws with their own exposed to vampire content are free and thus malleable. Writers consider themselves brilliant for finding this loophole. They apologize for being still eligible this year to not a vampire after one their official characters. They wouldn't need to be quite cozy by making their own rules. Listen to our spilled milk. Thank you. Amen. Our friendship is like a castle with 
ramparts and servants to wash our feet. Our friendship is like a battleship. You, you ram ship with ship. I'm sorry. Our friendship is like the summer solstice, the loneliest lasting never any day. Our friendship is like an opera with courses and courses of husky upkeepers. Our friendship is like a symphony, a crescending wave of wondrous rapture. Jim, do you hear that? The change of music. The music? Yeah, we can sing for the last five minutes. <laughs> but I hear it. I hear it. What's it mean? I think you know. Is it time? Goodbye. See, Chris, you can't. You went there today. Yeah, every day. You're trying to call me. Okay. 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 What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
I'm new here. Huh? I guess so. Well, since you snuck into the girls' restroom oh, hey. and spied on me and all, that's not fair. I think I've earned the right to know your name. You seem to have me pretty figured out. My name's Tim. Uh, you think you want to wash those hands first? Uh. Oh, I, I don't know if you care or not, but my name's Madeline. Madeline what? Rogers. You're Madeline Rogers? Wait, you've heard of me? No. I just thought <laughs> girls like to hear that sort of thing. <laughs> you know how they need attention. Don't they? Uh, anyhow, let's make this official. It's good to meet you, Madeline. You couldn't have dried those first? Well, no. A hand dryer would be entirely impractical for the stage. It's expensive, it needs a wall mount, it's too noisy for dialogue. Wait, wait, a stage? Trust me. It's there. Oh, you mean like all the world's a stage? <laughs> Something like that. What's that you have tied to your belt? Oh, you mean my magic beans? Did you say magic beans? Sure, I bring them with me everywhere. Just tie them right to my belt. Oh, are you trying to grow a beanstalk or something? No. A friend gave them to me. He said they would bring me love. Oh, well, can I take a look? Really? You want to see them? You mean it? Here, I'll just... Oh. Oh. Madeline, your arm is on my chest. Do you want me to move it? Only if you want. Um, maybe we should pick up these beans. Yeah, let's get them. Madeline, I'm going to need that sack to put these beans in. All right. Could you open it for me? Dermot Samuel! So sexy! I was just on my way out. I'm sorry I won't be seeing you in here anymore. Hopefully we won't be seeing you anywhere. Again. And Madeline, I'm sorry these are the best friends you could find. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, hi. What did he mean by that? Dermot is such a gentleman. He would never do anything like that. My prince is going to come on a white steed and have long blonde hair and muscles. He's got to have a good body. Well, for your sake, Madeline, let's hope he has a hot car. Oh, well, cars? Don't you the rich? Oh, I'm not looking at a cow to say. <laughs> oh, oh, he forgot his beans. Strange boy. Something about him, though. Botanical gardens have plant breeding programs to introduce new plants in the horticultural trade, a trade that is most fascinating. <laughs> and that concludes our lesson for today. I'll see all of you on Wednesday, where we will discuss plants. <laughs> uh, professor? Oh, yes, hello. <laughs> Remind me of your name once more. It's Chris. Ah, oh, Chris. My ex-wife's name is Chris. <laughs> you needed something? Well, last night I was reading the book about plant propagation. Horticulture, of course. Uh, no, propagation? Oh, you read the book? Yeah. Wonderful. So, propagation, what do you prefer, sexual or asexual? Uh, I'm an asexual man myself. <laughs> 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 Just a little joke. <laughs> well, Professor, I really just wanted to say that I, uh, it's really like a class. Oh, well, if you'd like any further information on horticulture. Oh, you mean it? Yes. It's wonderful. I'm so happy you're nice. I was almost afraid you were some sort of bloodsucker. <laughs> that made my life. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, we don't joke about that. Oh, I didn't mean to buy it. It's okay, young one. It's just a sensitive subject. That's all. Well, what do you think of me? Uh, what are you doing, say, next scene? Oh, next scene? Sounds great. All right. <laughs> Professor? Christopher. Professor. 
Souls, Christopher. Excuse me? Thomas Payne like that. You seem tongue-tied and I thought it might help. Well, that's great, Professor, but why the corner? I don't really want to talk about it right now. It's just a bad habit. I have bad habits too, Professor. Yeah. I bet you do. Well, I just came here to talk about plant propagation. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. So, horticulture, what are some of your particular interests? Well, I was reading on the right about midnight blossoms. Midnight blossoms? I have ten score in my castle. <laughs> you have a castle? Oh, yes. It's been in my family since the days of the late Duke von Verschenaware, all the way in Transylvania. Actually, this weekend, I was planning on taking a bit of a leisure trip to the forest. Really? Yes. We could tour the botanical gardens. We could go through my dungeon, my small coal refinery. What? I have closets full of coonskin caps and peacock feather pillows. Oh. I have rooms full of dream catchers. I have an outdoor shower with four faucet heads. <laughs> I have a corn maze in my backyard. We get lost sometimes, but we also have room flares. We have bonfires every night with jazz musicians. I have a whole vault full of gold coins, just like Scooch McDuck. We can swing the coins. Every morning! What do you say, Christopher? A castle Well, I've always dreamed that I... Stay with me, Chris. Oh. <laughs> Professor, that sounds wonderful. Great. Well, I'll make train arrangements for you tomorrow at dusk. Why are you doing in our dorm room? 
Wow, you see, about this time, every night, I get a massage of a very privileged young lady. And it seems that tonight, our paths are crossing just the right time. What do you mean? You want me to give you a massage? Yeah. Not a chance. <laughs> well, if you're not interested, well, wait. Who are those two fine ladies in the back row? Any volunteers? Let's see those hands. Come on, Stace, let's go. You are so much better than your roommate. It wasn't so hard living with that loser. Yeah, I'm kind of a martyr. Is he wearing mud? Oh, oh, have fun. <laughs> Madeline, your eyes, they shine like diamonds in the darkest, blackest night. My heart will take the test. I'll drop me, get you no rest. I will draw Cupid's bow and let that arrow flow. Fly. <laughs> My heart is beating, keeping me from sleeping. Today I found my future wife. It's just some time now before we'll be married if all we can in the restroom. <laughs> and this will last forever, but tonight I'm far from you. If only yesterday could be today. <laughs> My father told me, son, you must be patient, but I've waited long enough, and she is the one I want, the one I love. Five minutes and I love blossom, like every musical, only this could happen in real life. Yeah, well, that's me, you know, I mean, 
I've just been stuck in traffic for five hours. My girlfriend, Margaret, she broke up with me last night. Now I gotta show up for this gig. Some life, huh? I mean, I ain't even dead yet. I'm thinking I donate my body to science. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. That was inappropriate. My apologies. Anyway, at this point in our delightful story, Christopher has just left the train station. He's got a spring in his step and a song in his heart. Isn't that sweet? Now, as he enters the Black Forest, he comes across some uh, woodland folk on the way. To whom he inquires about directions to the kindly Count's inconspicuous castle. The friendly woodland folk set Christopher on the right path, and he thankfully continues his journey. Meanwhile, outside of his castle, Count William and his minions anxiously await young Christopher's arrival. This boy is fragile and very dear to me. Don't screw things up. <laughs> is that melon tasty? Yes, sir. Don't call me sir. You know it makes me feel old. I'm sorry, William. I just want you, you just wanted what? To be smacked for addressing me by my first name? Like you just said! Get out of here! The boy is coming! Go! But what about the midnight boss? In due time, my boy. In due time. Okay. Uh, is he all right? Who? Wagner? Oh, he'll be fine. But I'll show you to the Queen's chambers. Great. Tear me down, Denise. 
maybe it's time I, I took myself aside. In my younger years, I knew what happiness was. We traveled the packs, we went searching for fresh pools of blood. Said you're up for life sentence. I made a deal for ten years. I have abstained. In your real life, the law has really saved you. I lost my parents too. 
I know how you can feel sometimes. The bear becomes a bear. <laughs> ah! 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 What job is this? <laughs> Good work, Wagner. Uh, big boy. <laughs> like a princess riding a beautiful, a beautiful unicorn. What do you think of that one, Dur? Oh, that's good. Really? You like it? Oh, that likes. What? Will you say it something? Are you lifting outside? You're impossible. Impossible? Because I care about my body? Well, I'm trying to write a sonnet, Dur. You can't just rap out good poetry. <laughs> well, let's hear it then. Fine. This is what I've got so far. All right. Our lips never met. But in the restroom, I felt my heart being kissed by you. Bathroom poetry, huh? Yeah, that'll get her going. <laughs> You're right. She probably doesn't love me anyway, huh? She's just a girl, Tim. I don't see why you're killing yourself over Just her. a girl? Madeline Rogers is the most beautiful girl in the entire world! Kittens purr at her scent. Kittens, Tim. <laughs> when she sings, when she sings songbirds, join in sweet harmonies. When Madeline Rogers enters a room... Oh. Hello, Durbin. Have we met? Yes, we have. You should remember. Yeah, you haven't stopped by in a while. Oh, you mean the girls' restroom? Whoa! Whoa! Dilts! Ah. <laughs> Here you go, Durbin. We're all impressed. Hey, hey Tim. Let me get in the way of your uh, full court press there. Hey, if you're gonna put the pressure on her, put it on her. Tim, are you going to full court press me? Oh, yeah. He's been going on and on about springtime and unicorns. That's a definite full court press. Is this true? Oh, I don't even know what full court press means, but I'm sure I'm not doing that. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. I, I just got. <laughs> Woo! Uh, she wants the dirt! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We just... Durbin got down and... Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. I guess I can't blame you. Durbin said you were writing poetry? Oh. Uh, uh, could you read me some? Uh, if you don't want to, that's no, fine. I, sure, I'll read you some. Our lips never met, but in the restroom, I felt my heart being kissed by you. Your hair became a golden blanket, soft, <laughs> wrapped up. I'm at home, but in love, I'm lost. The girl in the poem. Madeline, I've been meaning to tell you for a long time now. Oh I, I, my God! What is going on here? Uh, listen, Madeline, uh, I'm going to go, but what I wanted to... I'm crazy about you, okay? <laughs> what? That's a weirdo. You have to see all the purses Dervin gave us. Well, Louis Vuitton, I told you to be three. <laughs> Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere. Yeah. And good night to you, Christopher. <laughs> he dukes right, he dukes left, spin move, touchdown, Chris Madden! And I'm just so proud of you, son. I can't wait till we get to play catch together. <laughs> I watched you sleep all night. You an incredible headache. Well, you've been through a lot. Is this... 
Black hair dye? Well, not everyone's bored with looks that can kill. <laughs> Is this lipstick? No, it isn't, son. Son? You're a vampire, Christopher! What? I fixed it! I fixed everything! What are you talking about? It was written in the stars! Oh, what's going on? What? <laughs> Vampires are drawn to their corners when emotions run high. It's a cognitive sanctuary. It's much like the womb. So that's why in your office? Yes. But I can't be a vampire. Then what are you doing in the corner? <laughs> Did you bite me? What's going on? I think you bit me. Is. I the door I, I got all this under control. control. Everything's fine. Oh. Don't worry about it. Did you bite him? Didn't we just sing a song about you and him and how you were not going to bite him? <laughs> Oh, you stop with the father! No, stop. I'm not stopping with the father! William! He needs to know. Yes, Christopher, I did bite you. But only out of love. I thought this was what you wanted. Oh, what I wanted? I just want my mommy. She's dead, Christopher. I killed her. <laughs> Shut up! I'm just Shut kidding! Up. I'm kidding, Chris! <laughs> Do you ever see a woman holding her baby? And you just get really jealous of her? Like you just want to take it? No. Me neither. Huh. <laughs> you need help. No, <laughs> Are you going to a funeral? 
things have changed, Dan. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I guess, see, they have. I guess Europe had an influence on you. <laughs> oh, my dear boy. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm serious. You're wearing a cape? You dyed your hair? Well, not everyone's born with the looks that could kill. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these morons? Oh, you must be my posse. They're a group of faithful friends. They laugh when I laugh. It's wonderful for the self-esteem. Oh. I don't even know what to think of you right now. Yes, well, I must be off. A dinner party. Well, I guess I'll see you around. You better have to hope you don't. Oh, and Tim, don't let the a vampires bite. That's me. <laughs> I heard you won an award. Uh, you look stupid. Thanks. You remember my friend, uh, Chris? Uh-huh. I think he was turned into a vampire. Oh, hey, that's cool. Uh, okay. Cool. Oh, Tim! Whoops! Oh, oh, my goodness. Well, I'm so thankful. For you. <laughs> Hush, my soap blossom. You need not fear any longer. Oh, then fear I won't. Oh, sweet lady, my name is Christopher. Oh, Christopher? Oh, well, my name's Madeline. Madeline? You have wonderful hips, but I must be off. <laughs> Dinner party, you know. Toodles. in quite the squall of emotion and deception. Christopher has returned in a raucous style, which is common to many new vampires. His desire to distance himself from his troublesome secret is beginning to wane, as he realizes he now possesses a mysteriously seductive power, especially over women. <laughs> Methods, you know, particularly difficult, mind you, to get a woman to jump so willingly from one man to another, not to name names, Margaret! But hey, <laughs> judge not, right? Anyway, meanwhile, Timothy remains completely unaware that Christopher's begun creating quite an yeah. unwelcome wedge, if you will, between him and Madeline, though he has just discovered that his best friend is now a vampire. And together, these complex crises create Quite the crazy conundrum as college classes commence. Ah, oh, well, come on. Let's see what's going on in gym class. Because as every good playwright knows, there's gym class in college. trying to say, the body, it's just a physical expression of the soul. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> so you really like ballet? Oh, you're just here for the ladies. Oh, sure. Form-fitting tights, dance around like fairies. What's not to like? <laughs> we keep the fairy dances. I come here to watch the ladies stretch. <laughs> and show up these. Go on, have a look. <laughs> Suit yourself. This is a little more action for the dirt. <laughs> Who's the new guy? <laughs> oh, I love his cape and his tights. Right, me. I'm terrified. I heard that. <laughs> Sweet lady, what heavenly grace precedes you? I see that your style is uh, unique. <laughs> yes, so are my moves. Catch me. Oh! <laughs> Little roll reversal. I like it. I suppose so. <laughs> Tell me, have you drank from the goblet of art and culture for long? Oh, ballet! <laughs> yes. Well, yes, I've been with the same instructor for ten years now. Oh, he must be very good. He is. But he couldn't make it today for some reason. 
Oh, I heard that today's instructor is from Transylvania. Transylvania? You said Transylvania. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of creepy, but I just love their accents. Vot accents. Okay, class. <laughs> Who's ready to get a little nutcracker crazy? Or dare I say, Swan Lake silly? No! We gotta get out of here! Dr. Mr. Boris was not quite lively enough today. <laughs> but it appears he's been properly disposed of. <laughs> we had some late students arriving. You missed my speech. Say you're sorry. Sorry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Uh, Cogner, will you kindly play the tape for this to the left? This one, sir? That's the one. His. <laughs> You killed 
an entire class and just let him go? Step one, vampire finds girl. Step two, vampire properly courts girl. Step three, vampire takes his bride. Right. But he knows nothing about vampires or their rules of courtship. Exactly. And then he'll need me. I'm a son to rescue. Nope. <laughs> That's how my first wife died. 
Uh, I'm really sorry, but I don't know how that's supposed to help me. Well, really, there's only one thing that helps in times like these. I know, but forgiveness seems impossible. Revenge, Timothy! Revenge! What? <laughs> he took your girl, you take his. How is that gonna help? It's a natural way of things. So all I have to do is take one of his girls from him. Exactly. There's this little filly in Chris's posse that he just loves. But she always turns him down. Picking her up would be the perfect way to get back at him. Okay. How do I find her? Well, for starters, I got a picture of her. This is a picture of Chris. Diving into a vault of gold coins. Oh, I'll take that. <laughs> Here she is. Her name is Jade. Yeah, you'll find her at the edge of the forest, close to midnight. Oh, and she's a real feisty one! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... You getting any bites there? No, nothing's hitting me. Uh, should probably get going. It's getting pretty late. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Good luck with the ladies. Huh? Why are you suing your tights? No reason. <laughs> you do know Jade's a werewolf. That fool! for a very special girl. Please, you have to leave the moon. Oh, yes, the moon. Full moons are beautiful, don't you think? Of course you do. Why else would you mention it? Please, I don't think you understand the consequences Shh. of... <laughs> Please stay. I've prepared a little something for you. Is come, little honey bear, <laughs> and the moon is all the glow. That's what I'm worried about. Close your eyes, my little <laughs> sugar bear. I'm a wolf. Shh, it's my song. I'm a bear. <laughs> And your skin is growing warm. That's just it. I'm transforming. I will hold your body close to me. <laughs> and I will promise you no harm. Like two angels in a golden dream.
I feel completely normal.
I had a Christian heart, I gave him shelter. But when morning came, he had done his best. He stole my three-wheel bike, my precious darling trike. I am gonna stab him in the heart. William, your days are numbered. William, your days. You cheated bars, but it's in the stars. I'll bury you today. You say you change, but you behave like the law is just a joke. With that boy, now you'll enjoy this dagger as your yoke. You had your chance, the story soon will tell That all dogs go to heaven But this one goes to hell William, your days are numbered William, your days You cheated boys, but it's in the stars I'll bury you Hello, 
<laughs> Christopher, let me take your cake. Oh, please. Oh, Mother, Father, I'm just going to go upstairs and finish getting ready. Oh, I'll be back in ten minutes. Oh, Chris. Yes? Don't let them scare you. Don't worry, darling. I don't scare easily. <laughs> I'm getting worried, Vic. Things are getting serious. And he's wearing black. Yes, like those hooligans from the shopping mall. <laughs> Let's just hope he doesn't smoke cigarettes. I'll pull him aside for a little chat. And then she said, then a corsage you will be. <laughs> Christopher, Christopher, please sit down. Now, I know this is a real wild time in your life. Feeling new things, going through all kinds of changes. Don't think I haven't forgotten that crazy age. Oh, honey, would you like to... Vivian, men are speaking. <laughs> She's growing up. That doesn't mean we'll be letting go. Well, it sounds like you love her very much. Yes. Yes, I do. Well, I've got to get back to chopping those vegetables. Come on, children. Let's get washed up for dinner. Love you. <laughs> now, Christopher, there are a few rules for having you out with Madeline. Okay. I see you have a convertible. I assume you have a roll bar? Yes, sir. Very well. You'll fasten your seatbelts. Open the door for her, of course. No loud music. Follow the traffic laws. I will be following in my car, just to make sure. <laughs> Please, have her back by ten. And, Christopher, you seem like a great guy, but there's one final rule. Now, both of us know about the birds and the bees. Well, I, my Madeline's a flower and she stays that way. If I hear anything sexy out of you, you answer to me! I packed quite a bunch, boy! I was in the army for nine years! And I know how to hurt you! <laughs> I'm sure you'll have a lovely evening. <laughs> Honey, do you know where I put the peroxide? I seem to have cut my fingers chopping the Love. apples. What are you doing? <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey! Hey! You, no good communist bumblebee! Blood sucking monster! You! Get out! And stay out! It's alright. He's gone. What happened? Where's Chris? Christopher. Dead to us. Then you looked like such a sweet boy. That communist you brought home almost killed your mother. Your father swore! <laughs> I hope you're happy. I don't believe it. Oh, please, honey. Sweetie, that man is dangerous. <laughs> Let her be, bitch. Let her be. <laughs> You're all enjoying the delightful events which have transpired as of late. Such pleasant things we have seen today, huh? Well, you know what they say. All's fair in love and war, right? Wrong! Love is war, and anyone who tries to tell you otherwise probably represents some lame old charitable organization that only wants what's in your wallet, you know what I'm saying? What's in your wallet? Ah! Yeah, you like that? How's that for impeccable comedic timing, huh? Carton! <laughs> this burger is magically delicious. I mean, it's the ball diggity. Kudos.
You're tasting, Christopher. Professor? It's me! <laughs> How long have you worked at Rubles for? Uh, only about five minutes, actually. It just took you a second to convince Malcolm that I'm right for the job. <laughs> <laughs> so I see you're developing the proper bloodlust. Well, yeah, but I taxed Malin's mother. I didn't want to, but the urge was just so strong. The thing is, I think I love her. You've got to help me get her back. Listen, Topher, you're a vampire. You'll never find love. But it's a hot chick. <laughs> but I thought it was love. Listen, it's all in the bite. If you don't go all the way right away, then things will fizzle. So you're saying? I'm saying any girl is yours if you play it right. Well, how's it work? Christopher, watch closely. Now the growth of a vampire begins with the girl and her neckline. You will charm and you'll woo, and she can't help but choose to fall for you. <laughs> so it's like that. Just you wait. Listen, this your fears of late. And your sorrows that I've seen Are not uncommon, no, not a problem Just a part of learning what you will be Now every vampire needs a woman And your heart it craves romance The key you see is sensuality Draw her near you, then you dance Step one, say our eyes are diamonds. They're diamonds. Step two, say you are mine. You are mine. Three, so softly, take her arm in. <sighs> That's the magic of a vampire.
yesterday. And oh, oh, I'm just so sore from saving lives. <laughs> oh, you must need a massage. We both know I get better massages than you. <laughs> ladies, ladies, there's enough of the dirt to go around. Come to the table plenty. <laughs> I'm sorry I yelled at you, Jenna. You have really great hair. You do get better massages, though. You're pretty much perfect. Thanks, so are you. Come to think of it, we're all pretty much perfect. And beautiful. And wealthy. And fortunate. I'm perfectly reborn. Even then, the girls begged me for more. At age five, of my father, he said, Son, you're born to a privileged family. He always known that you are perfect. He's perfect and so rich and refined. I wear tuxedos to bed, and they're perfect. We always wear high heels to the pool. We wear our diamonds to bed. Flat? 
Is that better for you? So much better. So certain what would happen. What, what did, did I, I do wrong? <laughs> but my new strategy is philosophy. You don't need anything. My heart is already yours. Can we ever be sure that what we had was real? Says that necessity has no place in humanity. But I prove when I met you that he was. And Immanuel right. Kant may say the world is just a construct of our minds. But that man never knew of a love but life. The Darwin kids are the only reason to, to look for what But I know there's much more within you, Madeline. my philosophy on life. Nietzsche's Superman can try, but he won't fly as high as I. And Descartes should have known that I love, therefore I am. Simply for philosophy, avoid those silly tendencies. For reason can vary your humanity. Keep on living the only way we know. The way we were born to. I know as long as I'm with you, life will be true. Because my philosophy is you. Well, I'll be the big finale coming up. How's your voice? Oh, good. I had some lemons on stage. Some lemons? No time. Ready? If I should leave or I should die, every moment that we share for this lifetime. Oh, oh. If I should leave or I should die, every moment that we share this lifetime. Chris, that's too high for my oh, voice. No, it's too low. Because when it comes to doing research, J.K. Rowling is just an ignorant mother. 
All right? Now, I'm going to tell you why werewolves really bite people. Werewolves bite people for two reasons, out of love or justice. Okay, now, I don't believe everything that Harry Potter says. I know what you people are like. I dated one of you. You're probably all a bunch of runaround Sue's, aren't you? I mean, you wait in line for hours to buy that pack of lies. I mean, Margaret, she cared more about Quidditch than she did about me. Quidditch and Dr. Bob. That's who she left me for, by the way. Dr. Bob, the billionaire architect. And I would be a monkey's uncle if I let that schmuck. You. Hey, you got some nerve coming to the show, Bobby boy. That's a nice seat you got there. I am front and center. Now, let me ask you a question. Did you buy a ticket for this show, or did you steal it? I only ask because I know how keen you are on stealing things. You know, like my girlfriend. Hey, hey, you look at me when I'm verbally abusing you, do you hear me? <laughs> oh, you think this is funny, huh? Well, you want to hear a joke? Okay, I got a joke for you. What's ugly, stupid, and wants to eat my fist? You! <laughs> Stoker, trying to understand what I was going through. Anyway, I saw her across the way, asked her to, asked her to dinner, and I bit her before we ever made it to the restaurant. <laughs> I was so eager back then. <laughs> anyway, it's been a seat of contention between us ever since. Well, why is that? I don't know. Something about getting to know each other first. She's just traditional like that. <laughs> well, there's just so much being a vampire that I don't even know yet. Well, why don't you come back to Transylvania with me? We can terrorize the local community there. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think I can stay here and finish school. Education. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> How about starting a campus of death together? Okay. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Look to the left. Try some innocent passerby. Helpless. Easy target. Probably delicious. <laughs> 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 Go get him, Christopher. That's my boy. A beautiful yeah. night tonight. Yeah, full moon. Oh, are you uh, studying for an exam? Phonics. <laughs> Good luck.
Tim! You! Oh, Chris, I'm... Why are we fighting? You stole my girlfriend. She wasn't your girlfriend. You were certainly moving in that direction. I saw you with her that night. I thought you bit her. You're really necky. Oh, Vampire instinct? Maybe I should have bit her. Hold it, hold it! Why are you half naked? I'm trying to get back at you. Now I'm a werewolf! Ah. Come on, Alright. Ah. 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 You can't bite you, Tim. I couldn't imagine the consequences of biting a werewolf. <laughs> if you're a vampire, why are you hanging around with werewolves? Why do you have to bring that up? You said we'd be a team again. What happened to you? Well, I went to Transylvania and Cat Williams, my botany professor, he took me to his castle in the Black Forest. Took me fishing. You went fishing? Yeah. Well, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He took me fishing. He told me about this girl you had a thing for, uh, Jade. <laughs> Jade? I never had a thing for. But she's a werewolf. <laughs> yeah, he showed me a picture of her. No, first he showed me a picture of you, swimming in a vault of gold coins. Oh, yeah! That's terrific! <laughs> Wait, is a picture of that? He keeps it right in his wallet. Oh, that's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, what, what happened at his castle? Well, one night he bites me, the next morning he ends up calling me his son. So I freaked out. Ran away. Listen. I'm sorry about Madeline. <laughs> Things actually, uh, they worked out between us. What are you so worried about? Friends don't steal friends, possibly serious love interests. Oh, come on. <laughs> Maybe I was upset about being a werewolf. Well, have you told her? I ran away. You ran away? I just supposed to love you for who you really are. Just run away. I mean, Chris, I would have torn her to pieces. Ah, ah, ah. Timothy Ralph Danner, we can't do this anymore. Yeah. Chris, can you see it? What? There's a new dawn on the horizon. Oh, yeah. See the sunrise beyond the hills there, see how it floods. We'll be a team once again without our thirst for blood. <laughs> As a team, we will both teach children how to read and write. And we will take all the love they give us, but never take a bite. We can overcome our problems if we try. To the upper echelons away, we'll fly. We have no time for killing, it's a bold. And monsters we will be no more. As Tim and Chris finally renounce the evil monster way, blah, blah, blah. They're never gonna <laughs> It's me! I need help. <laughs> so do we. That's what we were just singing about. Singing? Wait, what do you mean singing? Well, we just had a song a few scenes back. We made a kick one. Oh, yeah. That's right. We decided to both change our ways and stop being monsters. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. No, you see, it's the only way. I'll show you. Way on the way, there's a new way for us. We are finally free. Hey, I used to maim and murder strangers. Me too. But that's not me. I think I see the error of my ways. Killing crossing guards and families 
I've had my share. What a fail. Charm and gallantry. No more. You are so, so strong. You have to realize that there's more to life than <laughs> like cakes and blood and colors and nagging wives. The we redeem. Christopher will take me back. To join your son. Son is all I really want. Join him now. I think I will. ruin her happy ending. So I say, Carpe Diem! Seize the Seize day! Seize what? Death? I said Carpe Diem! Everything is fine!
There's a moral which we can take home and hold in our hearts. Throughout this one, we follow the fighting, the dying, the scares, but we see that love overcomes all. We followed a father in search of his long lost son, friends struggling with one each other, and that beautiful path of love. Through it all, we find that love is the answer. And the ah! Hello. I don't want to make this too long, but there are a few thank yous I think are in order. First of all, I'd like to thank my Uncle Jim for making this all possible, and the Akima Place for supporting us. A little bit closer. Also, I would like to thank Christopher Simmons for heading up the piano. Chris is also in the process of scoring the music for us, and... and irreplaceable part of the show. I'd also like to thank Matt Gossett for designing all the sound. He uh, balanced everything for us and our pit for providing us with music. So, let's hear it for them. I'd like to thank Tim for writing the music. Sometimes it gets like just the three of us, but with Tim is basically the mastermind behind the musical score. Chris and I helped out and like threw in some notes here or there, but <laughs> Tim basically wrote the 60% of the score in about five weeks or so, so, yeah. <laughs> Good job, Tim. I'd like to thank this guy, Chris Madden. He uh, woke up this morning sick with the flu. I don't know if any of you could tell. I couldn't. He did a fantastic throwing job. Up. He was throwing up. Yeah. So. All right. So, we basically... This is probably the last, this is the last time the three of us are going to be able to do this show together, so we'd like to thank all of you guys for coming out and supporting us. So, and I'd like to thank this cast. So. This is the part that uh, Bill and I rehearsed, where I take the mic from and I talk about him. Um, 
Uh, I really want to say thank you to Bill. Um, he did a great job of getting the three of us together and doing it. Like, we have many jo like jokes that we just kind of run around with, and n nothing really comes of them. Um, but when Bill, when Tim and I told Bill that we wanted to do this show and wanted to write it, he's the one who actually was like, "Well, it's going to be one of the things that just disappears like in about three weeks, or like, are we really going to put it together?" And so I just want to thank him for really cracking down and getting us doing it to do it. He's a pioneer. Um, if you want to get a part of this show, there's uh, DVDs and CDs in the back with T-shirts. Um, so, you know, don't be shy. Also, <laughs> part of that goes to Hakeem Place as well. Um, so thank you for your support and good night.